today is something that uh that I feel as though we really need to start discussing more um, the status of black relationships at going forward into 2020, especially for our age group. For sure. Because I feel like we we are um, like J Cole said, we the middle child. Yeah. The middle children. There you you know what I'm saying? There you we go. we are uh, right between the um, what is it, Generation X, yes. and we right there. Are we considered millennials? I never, un I know, you know I'm 35. I think that we came, or as far as, I think that like we came in on the tail end of the whole millennial thing. I right. think it's enough for us to relate to the conversation, but we don't necessarily always have to partake in it. Yeah, I, I, I feel that same way too, because I, I, I still feel like we're still attached to the, uh, the the moral values of like the for baby sure. boomers and, for sure. and, uh, and whatnot. We're not so much attached to. I think that twenty eight to like thirty seven. Yeah, group. yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. So, um, but we take a look at the landscape of like black relationships these days, and um, how do you feel? Do you feel like they're positive, or is it just it's negative? What What are your thoughts on it? So I think that this is going to be a topic that we have to touch back on. Absolutely. So I think it's going to turn into a series. I, of, I'm totally of, for of, that. Like conversations, yeah. and I think it's something that we're going to have to touch into several times throughout the year. Yeah. You know, on many different focuses, I think we need to get different outlooks and opinions in here. Mm -hmm. And because we, regardless of what, if you guys need to educate yourselves, educate yourselves. We are the majority, and with us, if you look from a global standpoint, it's so many black relationships, and it's so many things, so many perspectives, and so many outlooks to like gauge it by. Yeah, I think that we're meeting all the highs, I think that we're hitting all the mids, all the lows. It's so many examples for us to feel successful about, for us mm -hmm. to feel like this is room for improvement, for us to feel like you know potentially we can like constructively critique things or in some instances they're just like failures yeah so i think amongst uh, a group of you know a group of statuses we're hitting the nail okay on the head. so with that being said because we know media influences culture mm. media perception of black relationships mm -hmm. positive or negative so, I'll say this. I think that we're, because regardless of the media, I think within our culture that we're coming into like the age of knowledge, we're in the age of Aquarius. Mm. So, the media is a, a resource, but I think amongst ourselves, we're diving into each other enough to have our own opinions. Yeah. But media-wise, there are several um, individuals within, you know, PLCs, in the PLC group that are moving forward. Like Tyler Perry is here in Atlanta, so mm -hmm. he's giving a different vibe for like an outlook on opinions. Yeah. Media, we do have several relationships that are in the forefront. And I think in general, across social media, mm -hmm. it is very trendy to be in a relationship that seems to be successful right now. Yeah. So I like mm -hmm. that. Well, <clears throat> I would have to say that um, you, you touched on the social media age. I, I think for our generation that we're really truly looking for stable relationships and love, but what I see, unfortunately, for the generation younger, uh, I feel like they just want relationships for vanity. Like to say, I, I'm, I'm with somebody, like um, this is us, this is our selfie. Like, I don't think they really understand, you know, it's more to it than just an Instagram picture or or uh, you know videos of you guys wearing the same outfits and matching Jordans and stuff like that. It's relationships are 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 are, are very layered business. I mean, it's financial, you know, it's love, it's respect, it's communication. Um, I just I don't I think that that's what needs to be poured into these kids. You know, if they're going to be in a relationship, you know, you really have to put time and effort in because we're. When you're when you're committing to a person, you're thinking about a legacy. You know, you, if you're planning on producing children, potentially uh, some people are. Yeah, potentially. Yeah, well, I forgot these days. Like everybody just don't want kids. Eesh. And then the youth should be allowed to grow mm. up. Oh yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. I never. One thing I do tell tell a lot of young folks that I do talk to though, I, I tell them don't get too serious about a relationship in your early late teens and early 20s because you still have to discover the world mm -hmm. you know um 
I made that mistake when I was 21 and jumping in a relationship a little too early before I knew. Yeah. You know, we didn't know ourselves. You know, we thought we knew, you know, but you, you have to discover yourself and learn who you are mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. once you know who you are and what you're about and you're, you have yourself established, mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's easier to be a better compliment to your mate rather right. than, you know, just just being a young guy a young person and just jumping right in and you don't know who you are because all this is going to do is just cause chaos because right. you guys are still trying to figure yourselves out and then come together and mm -hmm. do this relationship thing so um yeah for sure i i totally think that um i, I would love to see this generation kind of slow down and, and discover themselves first before committing to someone um, because that way we'll have, I believe, we'll have more stable families, you know, um, more families that, you know, produce children that'll be more productive in society because having a strong foundation at home does so much mm -hmm. for us, you know what I'm saying? So I would love to see more black families. That's, that's one thing I really, really want to see more of. And I, I think with our generation, we are... We're, we're like the generation that's keeping that tradition on of strong of families. What do you think? So I'll piggyback of, off of that and I'll say that with that, I think that I can agree with you without the critical standpoint because like amongst the youth, if it takes y'all to like make a mistake within your relationships, if it takes you to get in a relationship that you fail at just to do better at your next relationship, I support that. Um, I'm not going to hinder that in any way, shape, or form because to allow black relationships to grow, it's going to allow certain relationships to go in uncharted territory. You have some people who are coming from single parent households who are like broken households or who individuals who come from places that they don't know how to like communicate, they don't yeah. know how to be a part of a team. And I praise you all. I know that there's going to be a bunch of downfall with that and a bunch of failure that comes with that. but. I'm, as a 30 year old woman who, you know, I was born in 1989, shout out to all like the 90s babies, <laughs> shout out to the 80s babies and stuff like that. For any of y'all who are forging forward and y'all trying to figure this shit out, I'm still with y'all. As far as them slowing down, if the if the end goal is to have a family union, unit and you fail at that, but maybe it's something that gears you up for that next sense, yeah. as long as you're open to that lesson, I support you. You know what I mean? There's nothing out here because what you guys may may not see is that like with our generation is that we would see all these marriages and you would see all mm -hmm. these super committed people but nobody ever talked about the behind the scenes bullshit yeah, yeah. so right now we got this young group of people who are willing to talk about oh this is fucked up this is not good this yeah. is good i'm very passionate about this oh i want to be with this person and it's not the maybe for some of us it's not the norm mm. some of us come from two parent households yeah. and I mean, I come from a household, a two-parent household, but I come from a group of people who maybe I don't think that that was my idealism of a marriage. And yeah. I was always told that people just don't divorce. So yeah. to this young group, figure this shit out, but find a way to not have any bitterness and like any like disrespect for the other. Don't right. like leave a situation to say all black men and all black women and blah, 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 and be bitter Man. from it. Grow from every circumstance, like grow from every experience and be willing to evolve yourself as a person. Forgive yourself because it's uncharted territory. For every relationship that, you, that you're that you in, that you're thinking it's gonna be the, the marriage of your dreams or whatever, mm. this is your first time in this uncharted territory. Because even if you're a boyfriend and girlfriend and it fails, maybe the next one time you have a boyfriend and girlfriend, you're still striving towards that wife. Like, it's still new uncharted territory, so allow yourself, that is what I say. I'm so open, I'm always on the, you know, I'm always rooting for like, people of color, you know, the original people. And um, I think that right now we're in the age of information and we're learning, yeah. we're learning how to treat each other. So be open and yeah. be able to be criticized. Um, yeah. If it's trendy right now, I would rather this be a trend than the shit from 10 years ago, like, mm -hmm. Dog these bitches out, yeah, fuck yeah, these yeah, bitches, get money from yeah. these niggas, da da yeah, da. We don't, want, we don't want that. Round of applause for y'all for trying something different. Now, you touched on something, and it, I seen a couple of articles that uh, that uh, spoke on this, but how about people who date outside of their race um, bashing black men and women? Mm -hmm. You have, um, you know, Patrick Peterson who plays for the Clippers saying that black women are pit bulls. 
And then okay. you have uh, the sister from. Uh, I don't want to be a bitch right now. Nah, go ahead. Fuck them. I, I guess we can't say that. No, but we can't. that's a whole different interracial relationships versus like a communion of two people, two pure blooded people who are coming together to have a union who can understand each other. I think it's two different conversations. So I think like right now we can either commit to talk about interracial people or the difference between interracial and like non-interracial relationships. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that like, I think one will, if you want to dive into interracial relationships, how, why, well, I have a different topic. Yeah, I, I, my thing is, uh, I, I'm saying like, if they're like disrespecting the black people and bigging up like the other race that they're dating. I think that's just corny that's and weak to me. Topic. It's a different topic. Yeah, that's so, that's you disliking yourself to the True. point that you can't fathom imagining having a child that looks like you. Yeah. That reminds you of your parents and that you have to date outside your race for whatever reason that you've told yourself that it'll just love just happens and blah, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. And this is how people just fall in love. That is such a different topic and we would have to get into people's like childhoods and what went wrong in people's childhoods and like faults and so well, on. Well definitely so well, I'm gonna make a note of that. Ugh, you know, it topic. becomes so much more than just a simple relationship. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody <coughs> I have never met two people who are just simply in a in a in a you know, in an interracial relationship. Mm -hmm. As crazy as that sounds, <laughs> there is something, there's a little seed, no matter how big sometimes there's a whole full tree and root of like self-hate that's been playing it mm -hmm. but there's usually something that's i just i still haven't met two people i have not met a pure-blooded person from one, one race and a pure-blooded person from another race where there's not some sort of backings that maybe something draw that drew you completely to a different person and yeah. i know that's so deep for some people to like comprehend somebody's at home like i just fell in love with this black man and that was just it girl right, right, right. we can have that conversation and some with black people, I get it. It's yeah. so much easier, you know, mm -hmm. because of society to date outside your race. Mm -hmm. And I get it. Like, you've been, like, the news and everything has taught you. And your school has taught you to hate yourself. And it's probably easier in this relationship. Media. But media. Yeah, you, you know, know, the media. But you, know, you see, like, nowadays, if you, if you ever notice, just look at, like, the commercials. You don't really see, like... Black a couples. black on black you see like couple. a white couple I mean a white dude man with a black dude. woman with yeah. this little white child yeah right right like I and see and all the commercials and they're like it's a brand new day right, right. <laughs> dancing around go yeah. to Old Navy that's what you see it's a whole yeah. different topic right yeah. right well um pretty much what we're, what we're saying is just well, what I, what I, this is personally what I believe that black love is a revolutionary act so that right there, just love each other, man. Like 2020, 2020, we just need to just fall in love with being black again. You know, uh, I think we're on a, a shift of a paradigm, I believe, where we're switching the narrative and uh, the world is returning back to its rightful owners. With sure. that being said, with yeah. 2020 being the beginning, this is a new um this is beginning with a new decade yeah what are your predicaments for black relationships over the next 10 years over the next 10 years uh like i said i just want to see more uh black love more black families more black stability um more because one thing i let's 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 learn let me let's look at this uh this world is ran by families mm -hmm. you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying so that's why i'm so big on um black power structures and black families, you know, coming together and creating economic bases and, and foundations. Mm -hmm. Cause we, we can't rule the world if we don't have our finances and For our sure. economics right. So more black love, more black people um, getting their finan financial uh, foundation built. Um, so let's do that, man. That's 2020. That's how we're gonna change the world and shift the paradigm. Cause that's what, that's what we were placed here in this time to do is to shift For the sure. paradigm. Through so, um, well, that was another installment of Culture Lounge with Vinny and Jody. Um, I'm rocking my cousin Marlon's brand, World Envision. You guys make sure y'all check them out. The link to them will be below in the comment section. Actually, no, not in the comment section, but the 
little link, you know, on YouTube how it's that like, shit you know, goes. Just look down there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we'll be back next week. You know what I'm saying? Same time, same place. I'm Vinny. I'm Jody. Alright, Culture Lounge. Y'all take care. Peace out.